Hey you guys, good morning. Uh, I'm going to go through some more questions. Um, <clears throat> it, see, the Almighty Cheeses asked, uh, I think it would be interesting if you could document one of your writing processes for your songs. Well, there's not uh, any real process. It It really just relies on if there's a riff that I really like it hits me in a certain way um, I don't really set out to try to be too original or try to write something that I think people would like it's more like <clears throat> if anything I'm writing something that or I'm coming up with something that I I like that I would want to hear um, or that makes makes me feel a certain way with like heavy riffs um, maybe it's kind of an adrenaline thing like like it's like yeah I love that you know it it I don't know it makes me feel uh, makes me feel really good also this is true. Um, things like depression, things like um, you know unhappiness, or you know uh, in, intense feelings that are you know anxiety or whatever inspires me to write. <laughs> Not that I'm saying like I'm feeling like that all the time, but songwriting is a way to uplift to um, boost boost my mood you know to, to get out of that to get out of that rut um, because when you do play music you get out of your headspace you know you're more in a in a momentary space and when you're in the moment you're not worrying about shit in the future, you're not, you know, dwelling on shit from the past, you're right now, and you're, you're working on creating right now, so, I would say that, um, and I just kind of go, go from there, if I find some riffs that I like, I stick with it, and, um, always have a recorder around, like, this right here. I'll show you guys. Okay. So, I have this little recorder. Okay. I've been recording on this. I have some other tape recorders. And I usually have a tape in here. Then we'll see what. So, I just, if I come across a good riff, I'll record it. So, I mean, I record myself singing sometimes to see how bad it sucks. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a big part of the process is to record, record what I, what hits me in a way that that I really, um, I really like the riff, you know, um, one reason, so I don't forget it, and another reason, just to listen back and, and see how it hits me when I listen to it, because if, if I listen back to something and it's, I still really like it, then, then it's, uh, then it's something I, 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 I stick with, so, um, all right, so Almighty Cheeses, that is the answer. We're going to move on. Um, and Andre uh, asked, you know, it would be interesting if I do some videos uh, where shows were, and he asked some other stuff, and that will be in the future. I have to reconnect with some people I connected with a couple months ago um, and try to get some of that rolling. So, JTube 
Um, he asked, it's kind of long here, can you describe personality traits of Kurt in terms of punctual? Was he, s yeah, I, I don't know about punctual, so I can't really answer that. <laughs> I mean, shit, yeah, I can't really answer that. Was he stylish when he was in Olympia, or was that something he developed after he got famous? You know, Kurt just, I don't know, he just wore what he what he had. I mean, that's my, my feeling, you know. Um, he wasn't trying to look extra punk. I think the, the only thing is, like, dyeing his hair or bleaching his hair was probably the only thing that sticks out to me that, you know, that he wanted to change his appearance. Um, so that's, that's that. And that, that was actually very inspiring, you could see, in, in the long run. I mean, you know, his hairstyle, like I was saying, when I moved back from Albuquerque in 1994... I remember, like, walking down the street in Seattle or whatever and, and seeing somebody that had the exact same hairstyle as, as Kurt and feeling like that's kind of new. I mean, that's not that people didn't have medium-length bleached hair, but, uh, you know, or how they dress, too, you know. I'm like, wow, there's, you know, people... The, the red dye, you know, started to... Red dyed hair started to become something you saw more often. I don't know. I'm I'm saying that there was some ins in inspiration for hair color from Kurt, so I'd say that. But like, what what he wore, I don't know. I I can't remember if it was Kurt because I I used to wear long johns under my shorts or long johns under my shirt. I might even have pictures. I'll have to look, but. I can't remember like what exactly inspired me and I and I remember Kurt used to do that so very possibly it was Kurt that inspired me to wear long john I mean see it's not it's not style it's actually you know to keep you warm and you know and I want to still wear my punk rock shirts so underneath that to keep me warm would be a would be a long john right long john so Okay, um, was he a patient person? Yeah, I think so. Or impatient. I think Kurt was always really patient. He listened, you know? I think that's a, a, uh, important thing is, um, everybody should listen closer. Listen to the person that's speaking to you. And, and, uh, yeah. So he was patient. For example, uh, let's see, uh, did he ever talk about exercising, running? No. Um, for example, was he a lifeguard? I don't know. I don't really know. I never went swimming with him. So I don't know, like, um, he may have been a really good swimmer. Who knows? Um, You know, like living in the Northwest, when the weather's nice, you get outside and enjoy the, enjoy the fresh air. Um, was he the type to enjoy a cafe or something with nice lighting or atmosphere? Now, the whole cafe thing didn't really start in my, I mean, that I remember, in the Northwest at least, um, in, you know, Seattle and uh, even Seattle, Tacoma and and Olympia until the, the 90s, and when more cafes started popping up, you know, maybe kind of like, like Starbucks, and then more cafes would open coffee, coffee shops, but in Tacoma, there really wasn't anything until the early 90s like that, that I, I remember, um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, that's, some place to go and, you know, hang out with people, drink coffee, and, I don't know, get a sandwich or whatever. So, let's see. Yeah, I think he liked the city. Do you think he liked the city? Yeah. I mean, you know, um, that's where things are happening. If you're in the country, you're kind of stuck to living, you know, in an area where not much is going on. Um... So anyway, yeah, that's answer that question. 
Um, Andy asked, uh, what kind of music was I into before I was into, into punk and the heavier side of things? Um, I've always been into, like, heavy rock music, so before I, before I listened to, to punk rock, I listened to actually early metal, um, a lot of, like, British metal, so, like, 19, shit, probably as early as 79, um, I was listening to, you know, bands like, uh, you know, Iron Maiden when they, when they came out, Motorhead, Saxon, um, Girl School, so all the British metal bands, Riot, all, all, you know, Riot was from the U.S., but there was a whole bunch of, you know, I mean, myself and my brother, we were always looking for the hardest music we could find. So before that, um, I was into classic rock, you know, I mean, it was still the hardest music I could find, you know, which was bands like Deep Purple, Black Sabbath, Aerosmith. I was never, I wasn't a Zeppelin fan back then, or Pink Floyd, I, I like those bands now, um, so yeah, but I wasn't into the Beatles until the 90s, really, until probably about 1990, I don't know why, I just, I don't know, I just didn't listen to them, um, let's see, alright, Okay, well, I guess I'll stop there for this video, and there's more, but I'll make this video this long. Okay. <laughs>